Hey guys, Joe Pai here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. While I am designing the side door and the hinge assembly for this mini mill that I'm building, an interesting thing has occurred, and I was curious if it has happened to you as well. Did you ever sit around at home and say, oh man, I gotta go out and get a hamburger? And you know exactly what you want. You want a hamburger, right? It's very specific. Well, when you get to the restaurant, and sometimes you open the menu, that's your first mistake right there, opening up the menu. Because when you open the menu, Oh, the Reuben looks pretty good. Haven't had one of those in a while. Ooh, but a chicken sandwich looks better than the Reuben. And all of a sudden, that hamburger, that very specific hamburger that you went to the restaurant for, it's like in the back of your mind. You go, okay, well, now I don't know what I want. <laughs> you get, and this boils down to you have so many options that you can't make up your mind. So sometimes you just got to just point and shoot, right? You got to make a decision, stick with it, go for it. And uh, maybe when you get halfway through, you say, Dad, I, you know, I should have got the chicken sandwich because this BLT is just not cutting it. Anyway, that's what's happening with the hinges on the door and the door itself. That being said, I'm jumping ship and I'm going back to the conclusion of the universal joint that I started two videos ago. If you haven't watched that one, watch that one because that's pretty cool how that little joint came popping out of nothing. Anyway, the screws that I'm going to use as the journals on this little universal joint are very small. And any time that you have to machine a screw, you risk damaging the threads, having the screw walk out of the machine, crushing this, that, and the other, can't hold it. So instead of going to the U-joint video, <laughs> instead of ordering the cheeseburger that I wanted to order, I'm gonna show you how to shorten exceptionally small screws with a great deal of integrity and repeatability. So let's go over to the lathe, which is right there, and set it up, and let's cut some 172 screws. That is an 072 diameter. What does that work out to? About a millimeter, 1.6 millimeters-ish. Somewhere around there. Anyway, let's set up the camera, show you how I did it. Okay guys, the size of the screw that I'm going to be working on today is right there. That is a 172. Let me stick my hand in there to give you a size reference. <laughs> yeah, right? No. Okay, well that's the size reference right there. That is somewhat small. And the problem with working with hardware like this, like I had mentioned before, is when you hold it, you're going you're gonna to crush something. So the ideal way to do this is to do it in a threaded arbor. But the problem is the threaded arbor itself will have a tendency. And a fly went by and blew this thing off the page. The threaded arbor is going to have a tendency to unloosen this thing and uh, retract it back into the arbor itself. But the solution to that is just to run the machine in reverse and it'll stay tight as you're doing it. So let me show you the arbor design that I'm going to use for everybody that needs a picture. I know sometimes it helps a great deal, so bear with me. I'm going to use a simple slug of uh, brass, a little bit bigger than the part itself. I'm going to drill and tap the front. And the amount of thread remaining on this particular slug or in this particular slug will be the amount of material you want left on your screw. So I'm now going to counterbore the back all the way from the back leaving that much material and that's what I want to see when the screw goes in here that's how much will protrude out and the remaining material on the arbor will be what's left behind so the screw is going to sit right in here like this and protrude out all as well now you can see the advantage to a setup like this that the overall length of this slug is never going to change but if the overall length of the head of the screw that you're using changes and you were to bank on the head of the screw itself, well, then that's going to change the overall length of the part or the overall length of the remaining feature. So this is ideal. Now, if you spin it forward, naturally, when the tool makes contact with the part, because we're going to be doing it this way, as the tool makes contact with the part on a right-hand screw, the rotation of the machine will probably lock the part against the tool bit and drive it back into the fixture. And then you've lost your part. So spinning it in reverse is the way to go. Little rule of thumb, little tidbit here that you may or may not have known for engineering purposes right here. Let's call that X. 
the thickness of the head of a cap screw imperial wise i don't know if this holds true for metric or not but the thickness of the head on a cap screw is normally ta -da, surprise surprise the diameter of the screw so for quickie calculations if you're doing something keep that in mind depth of your counter bore is normally the diameter of the screw Garber's going to be made out of 5 16 diameter brass, tapped 172, counterboard with an eighth inch end mill to clear the head. Let's go over to the lathe and do that. Now at this stage of the game, I'm going to take this piece of brass out of here, measure the overall length, and that's going to be a real working dimension for me. Knowing the overall length of the slug, the counterbore in the back is just simply uh, less from the overall length to achieve the feature that you want. And if this is 500 long and I want a 100 screw, I'll make the counterbore 400 deep. And I'll do that now, only because if I thread it, and then counterboard, I risk crushing the thread on the inside of this arbor, so it's always better to put the thread in last. I've added a chamfer to the front of it. I've done a couple of these off camera and I can tell you that it's going to be a lot quicker if you press this up against a belt sander. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim it down. I'm not going to hit the face of the arbor, although if the numbers are set on the machine, it doesn't matter if you hit the face of the arbor. But the more remaining material you have on the arbor, the better the feature will be on the screw. Fresh off the belt tender, let's pop it in the lathe, face it, and chamfer it. Then take a look. will be running in reverse so that it doesn't unscrew from the fixture. Beautiful. Absolutely love it. That is ready to install as is. 
no secondary necessary. Well, I hope you got something out of that you can use. If you're not doing a small cap screw, if you're doing a set screw, you've seen me do this before. I did it on the miniature drill press. Make the threaded hole in the arbor a little bit deeper. Protrude the set screw out that you want to adjust the length of. Drive another set screw in behind it and bind them together. Do it exactly the same way. Turn it in reverse if you have to. If it's really bound up like that, you may get away with turning it uh, forward, but don't bet on it. Going in reverse is always safer. At least in this case, it was. That's all I got for you. I hope you got something out of that. If you got something out of that, you can use, start with, modify, improve on, whatever. And if you use a steel arbor, you can do this on a belt sander and do it pretty quick. But you're not going to get the precision length like that. And ultimately, you're going to compromise the length of your arbor. So a lathe is a better way to go. Thank you very much for tuning in. Joel Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well and happy and safe. All of the above. Me, I'm going to go watch a UT Longhorn game and smile. Thanks, guys. Joel Pye, I'm out.